basketball. A no. And Wilson the rebound. Get the ball to go to the line if you use it. Either way, we're going to overtime regardless. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Bulldog Basketball Blast here on E Plus TV 6. Tonight, it's the Battle of the Bulldogs between the host Union Bulldogs and the visiting Fisk Bulldogs from the NAIA Division 2. I'm joined by head coach of the Union Bulldogs, Coach Dave Niven. Coach, first off, congratulations on your 150th career win. How does it feel? <laughs> um, it's, it's good to get a, a couple wins to start the season. Uh, I was pleased with, with um, a lot of things over the weekend. Um, Thought we got better in some areas. Thought we saw some areas we we can improve on. So hopefully we were we able we were able to fix some things um, this week in practice and and uh, and come out and, and play well tonight. Now over the weekend your team competed in the Gulf South Conference, Sunshine State Conference co crossover classic in Memphis. Team went two and zero. Tell me a little bit about what you saw from your team in those two games, and specifically how your team improved from one game to the next. Um, you know I I thought on on. The opener, uh, you know, you never know what you're going to get. You, you, you know very little about your opponent, what 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 they're going to have because it's their first game. So preparation is a little bit off. Your guys are nervous, um, and so we came out and and I thought I thought both teams played really hard. It was a close game all the way through. Uh, we had a guy come off the bench for us. Pedro hit uh, three threes on the night, but two big ones in the second half to give us a little bit of a, a spread there, which is, is what ultimately I thought was the difference in the game. Uh, then on Saturday, you know a little bit more about Lemoyne Owen because you got to see him play on Friday. Uh, but now you're playing a, a true road game at their place and and again, had had some opportunities to, to, to really get some separation. I don't think we shot it as well as we would like to um, against them, but, but uh, but in both games, played, play, played pretty well on the defensive side of the ball, which is an encouragement uh, for, for us. You know, that's been a goal coming into the season. Was that someplace that we really needed to improve? And, and, and it, 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 you know, it's very early, but we see some signs of improvement in that area. Now, for your team, uh, with only four returning players from last season, uh, bench players play a, a huge role on this team. Uh, talk to us specifically about guys like Pedro De Silva and guys like Tyree Boykin and what they'll mean to this team going forward. Yeah, I mean, we're, right now we're we're playing four guys off the bench. We've got a nine-man rotation. Uh, you know that 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 could get bigger. It could get smaller. You never know how how that goes throughout the year. But but uh, at this point, we really haven't had anybody that's just come out and said, all right, you know. I, I'm the man on this team, and we may not, and that's fine. Uh, we may we may be a team this year that that continues to play a bunch of guys, and they all play similar amounts of minutes. And and one night it might be one guy on, and the next night it might be somebody else. I, I don't know if we'll have somebody emerge um, like that to to separate themselves from the pack. But right now, um, in both games, we've had different guys do different things, and and I've been pleased with with. Uh, Really, all, all all nine guys that have been in so far, they've, they've each had an impact. They've each made mistakes. Um, nobody's played a perfect game yet. Um, we, we've watched a lot of film more this time of year than we will later in the year, just trying to learn and, 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 and see mistakes that are made and, and fix those. And so, you know, we were able to show every guy that played, uh, you know, some, some areas that they, needed, that they needed to improve. And areas that hey, you came in and you made a play for us here. You 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 got to stop. You got a great block out here. You made an excellent pass here. So um, it, it, it's it's been a good start from that standpoint. All right, well, coach, uh, that's about all the time we have here uh, for this Bulldog Blast basketball. Ba oh, excuse me, Bulldog basketball blast pregame show. Thank you so much for being here with us. Coming up next, we'll have the starting lineups. Alex and I will have the preview of tonight's game between Fisk and Union. Don't go anywhere. Union basketball continues right after this. What's your goal? Union University's degree completion program can help you get there. Union made balancing my work, my family, and school very easy. The day I walked in, they cared about me. 
Um, they were interested, invested in, in seeing me through to graduation. Reach your goal. Call 731-661-5163 or visit uu.edu slash reach your goal. Want to make your life a little easier? Now you can manage your Jackson Energy Authority account online. View statements, pay your bill, set up reminders, or recurring payments. Spend more time with your family, not your bills. It's easy. Just visit www.jacksenergy.com anytime and sign up. Make your life a little easier with online bill pay from Jackson Energy Authority. How many letters? Five letters. Just think about what am I doing right now? Smile. <laughs> Smile? Uh-huh. This is so easy. Community leaders are talking about Steve Beverly's TV classics, but are they serious? Do they like classic TV? Do they really watch? That's a lot of questions in one sentence, Steve. <laughs> what do they think about the host? I don't have any clear answers to that. What usually happens if you watch TV classics? I'm a very entertaining evening for people. Watch TV classics Saturday and Sunday at 7 on TV6. Oh, that's a good idea. Many of us will be carving the turkeys and worrying about our diets on Thanksgiving Day. But for hundreds of people in Jackson, Thanksgiving means an early start and a long run. The annual Turkey Day 5K is a joint project of Gold's Gym and RIFA. Lindsay Dawkins of RIFA and Lisa Evans of Gold's Gym are here to give us all the details. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks Thank for you. having us. All right, so how, how did waking up early to run a 5K become a tradition here in Jackson? It was just kind of a, a, a thought that we had, thinking we, we wanted to do something for RIFA, and so what better day than Thanksgiving, and it was kind of something we just kind of tried, and it went over game busters, and so it has become a family tradition now that people get up, bring their families, uh, they know it's for a great cause, and so it's, it's turned out to be quite a fun event. You get up early, you burn a few calories, have fun, family time, and then go home and enjoy the rest of your day and know you've gotten the morning off to a good cause. And how many people approximately ran in last year's race? Oh, wow. We had over 900, and we're hoping. We just really want that 1,000 mark. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. it's so close <laughs> every year to get to the 1,000 mark, so maybe this is the year. Well, I certainly hope it is. Um, so this joint venture of Gold's Gems and RIFA, what are some, we have some videos from last year's 5K and we, why we watched that. Could you tell us more about what RIFA does for the community? Yeah, RIFA, our flagship is fighting hunger in our community. And we do that through our soup kitchen, through our snack backpack program, through our food bank. And we're just so thankful for Gold's Gym. I mean, they've been doing this for 13 years and they do the legwork. And so we're so thankful for them to be able to have this partnership. And ultimately, we're feeding more people in our community through this partnership. You mentioned the uh, food bank. About this time of year around the holidays, does that pick up? Do more people come to the soup kitchens? And Yes, we see uh, an increase during the holidays through Thanksgiving and uh, Christmas. And we usually, through our food bank, serve about 650 families that they will get food boxes during this time. And that is, in addition to that, we also have thousands of pounds of food that will go out to other nonprofits who are serving uh, their community as well, like the Crockett Christmas Partners, that they do their own meals and stuff like that. And so a lot of food goes out during this time. And uh, with that many people serving, if individuals or church groups or organizations want to get involved in helping, how would they go about doing that? Yeah, the easiest way is to visit our website at rifajackson.org or just to call our offices and, and just figure out what the best day is and when we have volunteer opportunities available and open. But we rely heavily on volunteers from the community to help with RIFA. So going back to the 5K, um, how do you register to compete in that? There's a couple of different ways you can register. You can come by Golds, of course, and, and register there. And, uh, or you can go on races, 
Com, racesonline.com. They will cut that off on um, Tuesday, so they will cut that off. So you can still come by Gold so and register anytime. Also, there is registration also race day, so you okay. can come by race day. But we do advise kind of registering in advance. And getting up early in the morning, obviously there are some struggles that go with that. What would be the hardest thing about running early? Oh, just make sure you've had a little something to eat and, uh, you know, come in a little bit early, get your packet and get your packet in advance so you can maybe get a little extra sleep and then, uh, you know, come and get a little warm up. But the weather looks fantastic for that day. So that'll be a plus for us. So come and get a little warm up and visit with friends and family and you'll be ready to go. Yeah, and you said you had nearly a thousand people come out last year. What kind of feedback did those competitors give to you about the race? Oh, they love it. They love this course. It's it's a it's a nice little flat course with a one one little hill in there. It's mm -hmm. a surprise, but all in all, it's a really good little flat course to run. And uh, we have a lot of people on the course for support, so we have some really competitors that come. Yeah. All right. And re recapping here, give us just the time and the location for this race. Okay. It starts at 8 o'clock a.m. at Gold's Gym, and we're on Carriage House Drive. Uh, there's plenty of parking all around that day. And uh, like I said, if you want to come and get your packet that day, you do need Perfect. to come early. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Hard to watch, isn't yeah, you it? Going? You're sorry. Does this make it easier? I'm sorry. Sorry. How about this? Tell me how stupid you are. Maybe you should just look how away. How stupid are you? Tell me how stupid you are. I want to hear it. Is that better? It's hard to watch, but if you or someone you know is in an abusive relationship, make the call. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Community leaders are talking about Steve Beverly's TV classics, but are they serious? Do they like classic TV? Do they really watch? That's a lot of questions in one sentence, Steve. <laughs> what do they think about the host? I don't have any clear answers to that. What usually happens if you watch TV classics? A very entertaining evening for people. Watch TV classics Saturday and Sunday at 7 on TV6. Oh, that's a good idea. And welcome to the Fred DeLay Gymnasium here on campus at Union University. He's Alex Northcutt. I'm Logan Whaley. And Alex, almost Thanksgiving break. I'm very thankful to... One, uh, be able to commentate this game with you. For sure. Commentate a great basketball game. For and sure. two, thankful that school is almost over. We're that way we get so it. So close, my yeah. brother. We are so close. One more day of classes, and then we got a week off. Absolutely. But well. what way what better way to kick things off than on the basketball court? Absolutely. We have a great game on hand here at Union University. It's the Fisk Bulldogs and the Union Bulldogs Fisk. Uh, the team from the NAIA Division II, six and one already this season. NAIA with the early start time. This is a team, Alex, that honestly has the the look on paper to be a very very good team. Yeah, they look like a uh, a very fast team. Uh, you just take a look at some of these numbers. Overall, uh, they're not just going to kill you just from a shooting standpoint, but just taking a look at just a few stats uh, right now. 95 total turnovers, 58 total steals at a team as a team in their first seven games, and they're averaging 75 points a game. So, from a numbers perspective, again, numbers sometimes have a have a tendency to lie just a little bit and bend the truth. But if we're just going from what we look on paper, this is a team that likes to get up and down the floor really quickly. They like to play with a fast style. Absolutely, their last game was against Bethel. A powerhouse team in the NAIA won that game 66-55 as a team they had 26 turnovers and shot only 54 percent from the foul line but still managed to win that game and I think a big part of the reason why they won that game they had 35 bench points as well as they out rebounded Bethel 47-32 Alex how important is it especially against a tall team like Union will rebounding be tonight for Fisk well it's going to be huge because Again, looking at on, on paper stats, Union clearly has the advantage when it comes to rebounding. They've got the height. Uh, they've got the, the physique 
to be that better rebounding team. But I, I do think that Fisk is going to surprise a lot of people. They're going to come out and play with a very aggressive style of play. Union's got to be ready. Uh, this is a team that plays well on the road. They've got a couple of road wins, like you said, a couple of nights ago against Bethel. Uh, don't expect Fisk just to be a pushover team. I know, you know, the whole Division II NAIA conversation. But expect this to really be a fast pace. I expect it to be, at least starting out, a pretty competitive one. Absolutely, and Fisk on a six-game winning streak. Their right. leading scorer, right. and fans, brace yourself for the name. It's one El Paso That's Pitts, right. <laughs> averaging 12 points per it. game, 43% from long range. Yep. He is their main scorer and their main three-point threat. What must the Bulldogs do, the Bulldogs of Union, that is, to be, to be able to stop Pitts on the three-point shot? I think just slow the game down. Uh, get him out of his rhythm. If he likes to play fast, if he likes to get up and down and score in transition, Union just as a whole, as a team, just needs to slow the game down. Yep. And speaking of Union, coming off of uh, some great performances in Memphis last weekend in the Gulf South Conference, Sunshine State Conference crossover classic. That's right. a mouthful right there. Uh, but they beat Lemoyne Owen, mm -hmm. and they also beat Spring Hill. Yeah. And two great performances by the Bulldogs. Played extremely well defensively. And Coach Niven talked about in the pregame show how pleased he was with his team defensively. And, Alex, I, I guess the main question is what can we expect to see from Union in a game like tonight? Well, in a game like tonight, like we previewed, um, the students are winding down for Thanksgiving break. Pretty much a basketball game really isn't the, the only thing on their minds right now, but Union still needs to come out and stay focused. I think build off that momentum. What Coach Niven really said was uh, he was impressed with the defense. So if Union can come out and play a good, strong defensive effort, uh, I think that's really going to benefit Union in this game because that's going to set the tempo. Absolutely, and uh, let's talk about the Spring Hill game first. Charlie Wilson uh, really looked like he was shut down in the Freed Hardeman scrimmage, but right. opened up his season on a high note. 23 points, 8 of 11 from the field, and 9 rebounds. Pedro Da Silva uh, coming off the bench, nailing three three-pointers and having 12 points overall. And Casey Goodwin, the, the main distributor, seven points, nine assists, five boards, and a couple of steals. Uh, yep. Really an all-around team effort. But how great uh, is it if you're a Union Bulldog fan to be able to see Charlie Wilson put up those types of numbers, 23-9, and nine, and then the, follow it up the next game with 13 points and 14 boards? How crucial is it for Union to have Charlie Wilson healthy and playing at that level this season. Oh, it's season. huge. It, it's absolutely huge. I think one of the biggest things he struggled with last year was consistency, getting those consistent games. I also think a lot of people expected uh, almost too much of too much out of him last season. This year he's kind of embraced that role as the team's go-to guy. Uh, and if he can really come out and maintain that consistency, maintain that high level of play that he's been at these past couple of games, Union's in a great position moving forward. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the starting lineup for the host Union Bulldogs. A uh, bit of a couple or a couple late changes in the lineup really, but let's go ahead and have a look at what the Union Bulldogs will throw out there. First, it's a 6'6 freshman out of Independence, Kentucky, J.C. Hawkins. And then we have the 6'2 senior guard out of Milani, Hawaii, Nick Velasquez. And then it, the six-foot senior out of Memphis, Tennessee, Charlie Wilson. The six-eight senior forward out of Pensacola, Florida, Charlie Wilson. And the six-two sophomore guard out of Oviedo, Florida, Alex Keel. And that is the lineup for the Union Bulldogs. Changing it up a little bit, uh, perhaps with mat matching up the size that we'll see Fisk offer. And so Alex and I will have more previews of this game between the Fisk Bulldogs and the Union Bulldogs. We'll be back here at the Fred DeLay Gymnasium after this quick two minute break here on E Plus TV6. Want to make your life a little easier? Now you can manage your Jackson Energy Authority account online. View statements, pay your bill, set up reminders, or recurring payments. Spend more time with your family, not your bills. It's easy. Just visit www.jacksenergy.com anytime and sign up. Make your life a little easier with online bill pay from Jackson Energy Authority. United. United in academic excellence and research. United in love for Christ and biblical truth. United in service and caring for people. United for you. At Union University, no matter what you study, you are part of a close-knit community dedicated to your success. Union University. United in spirit, grounded in truth. Listen to me. I have 30 seconds. What did you know about me? About being a kid with a disability. I am a joker. I am a songwriter. And I'm here to learn. 
I am a girl who likes math and science. I am good with Hey, I'm speaking up. And I am not. And I am not. And I am not going to be bullied. Got it? Steve Beverly's TV classics can cure what ails you. I watched and it got rid of my hemorrhoids. Staying awake at night? Just watch TV classics. My daughter watched and she went right to sleep. Do not watch Steve Beverly's TV classics if fights upset your stomach. Do not watch if high drama leads to emotional distress. And do not turn on TV six Saturday or Sunday at 7 if hillbillies give you a gallbladder attack. Ask your doctor if Steve Beverly's classics is right for you. Back here at the Fred DeLay Gymnasium, it's the Union Bulldogs and the Fisk Bulldogs here on E Plus TV6. Alex, getting closer to tip off here. What are some keys to the game? And we'll start with the Fisk Bulldogs. Uh, for Fisk, they just need to keep playing their style of play. Don't run away from anything that you've been doing that's got you to where you are right now. Six and one starting off a season. Uh, you can't be unhappy with those numbers right there. Again, this is a team we just don't naturally just know much about. This isn't a team that Union really faces off against on a yearly basis. But I think for Fist, they need to just come in here, play confident. Don't be, I guess, phased that this is a Division II program right here. Just come in and play your natural style of ball. You're on the road. You have nothing to lose. Absolutely. And this will be the first game between these two teams all time. We have seen Fisk uh, play the Lady Bulldogs before, but never right. the, the Union Men Bulldogs. And... Uh, switching gears now, talking about Union, what yep. must be the keys to the game for them? Uh, I just got three simple keys right now. Like I mentioned uh, before we took the break, slow the tempo. This is a team in Fist that likes to get up. They like to run. They like to get after it on both ends of the basketball. So Union needs to slow things down, play composed, execute very well on offensively. Secondly, rebound, control the glass. If you control the glass, you control possessions. And then lastly, shoot the ball well from outside. You're in your home gym. You have a player in Nick Velasquez who's been on fire the past couple of games. His last game, last game I believe, 23 points with seven three-pointers. If he can produce like that, the Bulldogs are in a good position. And I think the team as well just needs to focus on knocking down the outside shots. They'll be okay this afternoon. Absolutely. In that last game, you're right, 23 points for Velasquez, seven three-pointers. Had a lot of volume, too. Shot 17 yeah. threes in that last game. Yeah. And Velasquez definitely confident when shooting the three ball. And honestly, I, I think this offense, it, you got to work inside out if you want to get Charlie right. Wilson the majority of the touches. And Velasquez has to be able to knock down those threes to open up those, those opportunities for Charlie Wilson. Yeah. But talk a little bit more about Velasquez because had a bit of a rough start to the season, so to speak. It gets free, didn't really show up, and uh, I believe didn't score at all in the Spring Hill game, but exploded for 23 uh, against Lemoyne Owen as a player. Scoring 23 points, how can you carry that momentum from game to game? Well, he's very similar to Charlie Wilson, I would actually say. Obviously not in style of play. He's not a big post player that's just going to bang in the boards down low and get his points that way. But as far as last season, really struggled with consistency as well. He was a guy that could come off the bench and get you about 20, 25 points a game if you needed it. Or he was a guy that would go cold from the outside and honestly would only play maybe seven, eight minutes a game. You just never knew what you were going to get with Velasquez last year. This season, I do think, again, with just a brand new roster coming into play, he's also embraced that role that Coach Niven needs him to be as one of the primary leaders on this team, specifically on the offensive end. He stepped up. He's worked on his defensive game. He's become a primary defender on the ball. And so now when you've got that inside-out game that you're talking about, get Charlie Wilson the touches. You know people are going to collapse on him if it's not a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Kick it out to Velasquez, and he's going to knock down the outside shot. Absolutely, and that's something that I believe Charlie's really struggled with uh, in his career here at Union. People have really collapsed on him. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing for Charlie Wilson to be able to do is to make quick decisions whenever he feels the pressure because, honestly, when you have two, three guys on you and you're yep. uh, you're taking your sweet time trying to get the ball out, it's going gonna, it's gonna to result in a lot of uh, jump balls and turnovers, and I think – you're absolutely right. Hit the nail around the head here. And about 30 seconds to go here before we take it out to Josh Simmons for the preliminaries here. Uh, J.C. Hawkins, a late addition to this lineup. 6'6 six, six freshman. He's played really well this season. What can we expect to see out of Hawkins? He's going to be very versatile. He's going to hit you from inside, outside. He's a, a guy that you just really – uh, he's a not, he's a mismatch nightmare. So Fisk is going to have to really play him well defensively to slow him down. Absolutely. And with that, we're going to take it down to Josh Simmons with the preliminaries, including the invocation, national anthem, and the starting lineup. And then we'll be underway here at the Fred DeLay Gymnasium between the Fisk and Union Bulldogs. 
and your Union Bulldogs. This time, we ask you to stand for our invocation. For all this evening, Professor Bill Nels, and remain standing for our national anthem. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity for bringing competition between the Union University and the Fisk University. Father, we ask that you give protection to the players, give them good sportsmanship, encourage them in their abilities, and keep them ever mindful that you are their creator, you are their Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now for your starting lineups, first of all, for the visiting Bulldogs of Fisk University, head coach Larry Butler, assistant coach to Trey Hampton. Starting at guard, the freshman out of Memphis, Tennessee, number two, Corinne Davis. Starting at guard, the junior out of Memphis, Tennessee, number three, Victor Austin. Starting at guard, the senior out of Mexico, Mississippi, number 14, Joshua Madison. Starting at four, the senior out of Mexico, Mississippi, number 20, RJ Scott. Starting at four, the sophomore out of Holland, Mississippi, number 23, Addison Miller. And now for your Union University Bulldogs, head coach David Niven, assistant head coach Trevor Lyon. Starting at four, the six six freshman out of Independence, Kentucky, number three, James C. Hawkins. Starting at four, the six two senior. Hawaii for five. Nick Flexstands. Starting guard, six for six of Memphis, Tennessee, number 22, KC Goodman. Starting at four, six eight senior for Vincent Bolivar, number 23, Charlie Wilson. Starting guard, six two sophomore for Florida, number 33, Alex Keel. the starting lineups for both of these teams. Again, for Fisk, it's Tyron Davis, Victor Alston, Joshua Madison, R.J. Scott, and Addison Miller. And for the Union Bulldogs, J.C. Hawkins, Nick Velasquez, Casey Goodwin, Charlie Wilson, and Alex Keel. He's Alex Northcutt. I'm Logan Whaley. We're led by producer Steve Beverly, director Paul Schulze, and co-director Lawson Mann, and the wonderful crew here at Worthy Road Studios. It's the Fisk Bulldogs 6-1 on the season, and the Union Bulldogs 2-0 here in this non-conference matchup. Looks like it will be... Number 20, R.J. Scott and Charlie Wilson set to tip things off for both of these teams. And here we go. Wilson, Scott. And it's time for Union Basketball here on E Plus TV6. It's the Bulldogs with the opening tip. Keel left side. Inside to Wilson. Quick move goes up and finishes strong. Nice move there by Charlie Wilson. And an early strong move from Charlie inside. Note, Fisk playing a zone, so that's a big move right there that they can get the ball inside with all that pressure. 
And other side, it's Addison Miller missing for three. Wilson with the rebound. And now here come the Union Bulldogs the other way. Velasquez right side. And now it'll be Goodwin setting things up. And the key to beating a zone, ladies and gentlemen, is you got to move that basketball. So I'm going to really focus on how Union does that in the early minutes of this contest. Keel. Spreading it around here are the Union Bulldogs inside to Wilson, backing down, out to Goodwin for three. No good. And the rebound will go to Miller and the Fisk Bulldogs. Setting things up is the freshman Tyron Davis out of Memphis, Tennessee. Inside the three-point line is R.J. Scott. No good. Goodwin with a rebound. Now here's Goodwin pushing it up the floor and runs into Victor Olsen, who will get charged with a foul. Oh, and also another good way to beat that zone, too, is you got to beat it in tr transition. Don't let that defense set up into their normal rhythm. Casey Goodwin doing a great job of getting the basketball out front early. And this is a Bulldog basketball team, Alex. I think could really move the ball quickly if they wanted to. Here's Velasquez outside for three, and he drains it. Let it fly from deep. I like it. Quick possession. Picking up right where he left off, if you will. Absolutely had seven threes his last time out against LeMoyne Owen, and quickly the other way for three is Joshua Madison, the senior guard. And a nice little step back answer from Madison right there. It's going to be tough to guard, too, that little left-handed stroke. It's pretty. Absolutely. Bulldogs quickly advancing, but now setting up here. 16 to shoot. Here's Wilson, thought about it, kick out to Keel for three, no good. Excellent kick out by Wilson. Keel's got to hit that outside shot. Here's Tyron Davis now for Fisk. And now Davis will set things up here for Fisk. And a travel there. It's Joshua Madison a bit indecisive with the basketball and it's gonna be Union basketball. Well, that's the kind of style you're probably going to see from Fisk all night long is they're just going to try to isolate on a wing and just go from there and play one-on-one -on -one kind of basketball. So man-to-man -man defense, Union has got to step up tonight and lock down uh, their, their offenders. Left side, here's Goodwin. Inside to Wilson. Quickly kicks back out to Keel. Quick ball movement here by the Bulldogs. Here's Hawkins, top of the key for three. No good. And the rebound goes to Miller and Fisk. And against the zone, you're going to get a lot of outside looks. you got to hit them. Transition three, no good by Victor Alston. And it will be Union the other way. Left side, here's Keel driving. Back out to Goodwin, wide open for three. No good. Wilson with the offensive rebound. And Union will reset. Here's Velasquez, thought about it. Loses it. Wilson has it. And hammers it home. Right place, right time. Picked up that loose ball and flushed it home. And it will be Coach Larry Glover taking a quick timeout here. Union out to a quick 7-3 lead over Fisk. We'll be back after this quick break here on E-Plus TV6. United. United in academic excellence and research. United in love for Christ and biblical truth. United in service and caring for people. United for you. At Union University, no matter what you study, you are part of a close-knit community dedicated to your success. Union University, united in spirit, grounded in truth. It'll be fist ball after the timeout. And Rachel, uh, Coach Niven, what did he tell his guys in the huddle there? Well, he was applauding his team for getting the ball moving, and that was really his big thing, was just keep it moving. He said that they had a very good end, like a strong ending of that last play. And he said, keep it up and keep that ball moving. I think he realizes that if they lose the momentum, it will hurt them. RJ Scott with a layup there. Thank you, Rachel. That is Rachel Pratt, the sideline reporter. And he, and she's right, Alex. Uh, in a zone, you got to keep the ball moving quickly. And Bulldogs have to continue that pressure. Here's Goodwin, top of the key. And a flop there, pull up jumper is good for Casey Goodwin. So yeah, I've always been a big believer in take what the defense gives you. And if the defense falls down, hit the 15 foot jumper. Hey, you never know, there could have been a sniper in the rafters here at Fred Delay Gym that could have explained that. But either way, pulling up from the left side is Tyron Davis and the iron was unkind on that one. Here's Goodwin the other way. 
Keel, right side. Multiple substitutions coming in for the Bulldogs after this next dead ball. Bulldogs swinging it around here, not really sure of what's happening here. Keel, now left side, Velasquez for three, and he drains it. The extra pass right there. I saw Hawkins take a look at that rim, thought about that shot, and made the extra pass. And Velasquez, already two threes down. Absolutely. Bulldogs looked indecisive there on offense before finding Velasquez open there on the left wing. Nice shot. Left side, here's Madison. Now here's Scott against Hawkins, goes up. No good. Good defense by the Bulldogs there. Now here's KC Goodwin the other way. Inside, Wilson, power dribble, goes up, and it's good. Excellent feed, excellent finish, and these two seniors playing very well in the opening half. Absolutely. Now Fisk the other way. Bulldogs up by nine. Fisk in needing of an answer somehow. Left side, here's Tyron Davis. Top of the key to Madison. And a turnover. Well, I thought it was a turnover. Regaining the ball is Joshua Madison, and he'll drive the lane for an easy layup. Here's Velasquez right corner for three. Good. Velasquez got the friendly roll. He's three of three now from long range, and the Bulldogs now have a double-digit lead. Even though Fisk had the easy layup on that last possession, able to get it out quick and find Velasquez in the corner, and he's... Again, doing a great job of consistently knocking down outside shots this season. R.J. Scott over Wilson, no good. Good job by the senior Wilson, able to make that shot tough. Here's Goodwin now. Wilson out to Hawkins to Keel. And he'll get fouled on the drive. And multiple substitutions for the Bulldogs. And we'll... Tell you a little bit more about those substitutions, but right now we have a media timeout. Bulldogs of Union taking a 17-7 lead over Fisk. We'll be right back after these messages. Gig, 1,000 megabit speed, now available to any E-plus broadband internet customer. This gig-enhanced infrastructure has the capacity to increase speeds in the future. E-plus broadband, what many interpreted as JA's entrance into cable television, was actually the foundation of an unparalleled communications infrastructure. Looking out for Jackson's economic and lifestyle future is all a part of JEA today. Back here at Union University, Union has a 17-7 lead over Fisk. Now, Alex, Union, multiple substitutions here. What are you expecting to see right now? In this game, I think uh, Coach Nimitz is trying to get some different looks, a different lineup, but I still think he demands the same level of intensity early on in this first half. Absolutely, and now Daniel, uh, Coach Larry Glover, team struggling offensively. What did he tell his guys in the huddle there? The main thing he told his guys is to work better on communication. He said there's not enough talking between the players to execute the offense. Absolutely, and, and now Rachel. Uh, Coach Niven probably pleased with his guys after that quick start, but. What do he tell his guys in the huddle there to keep their focus? Yeah, he definitely is very pleased. And uh, very similarly to Fisk, um, Coach Niven focused sincerely and very, very heavily on communication with the team, uh, making sure that his players are communicating with each other. One thing that he said is they are very good at screening and very good guarders, so you have to be better and you got to communicate. And so I think it's really interesting. He sees the talent that Fisk does have. Absolutely. And that was Rachel Pratt, Daniel Potts, our sideline reporters for tonight's game. Here's Tyree Boykin for three, and he nails it. Welcome to the game, Tyree Boykin, freshman out of Clarksville, Tennessee. Like I said, if Union even shoots even under 50% from outside tonight, they win this game by a large, large margin. Basket by Alston there. Now it's 20-11. Fisk does not take long to get a shot off in a possession. Eight seconds maybe at the most. Here's Velasquez for three. And when you're feeling it, you're feeling it. Fourth straight three from Nick Velasquez. He has 12. Nothing better than a little home cooking right before Thanksgiving, if you will. And a turnover there by Fisk. Here comes Pedro Da Silva, the 6'10 big man. 
Gets it knocked out of his hands. Hey, you know what I always say, not everyone's meant to play point guard. <laughs> Absolutely. And Alston again for two there, and I guess Pedro Da Silva thinking he could be like most other 6'10 guys in the NBA, like a Giannis Antetokounmpo or something like that, where he could dribble it down the court, but not the Greek freak. Here's Velasquez, wide open left side. Nothing but the bottom of the net. I'm just going to leave my hand up all night long because the threes are just raining from Velasquez. Five of this five. This is fun to watch. And we've only played eight minutes here in this game. A floater, no good. The Silva with a rebound. And I guess now would be a good time to reset the five out there for the Bulldogs. It's Barnes with the ball, driving. He'll get fouled. Couldn't convert, but he'll go to the line to shoot two. Todd Barnes, the 6'5 junior out of Altadena, California. He's joined out there by Nick Velasquez, Tyree Boykin, Pedro Da Silva, and Tevin Florent. Now Florent at the line, Bulldogs. You know, in the words of Ron Burgundy, Alex, this escalated quickly, a quick 26-11 lead for Union. What's gotten them to this point? Well, I will say this. Obviously, the outside shooting, which was a key to the game. They shoot well from outside. They win this game, point blank. However, Fisk is getting a lot of easy looks. They haven't been knocking them down, but they're shooting quick and often simply because they're getting wide open looks, whether that's outside or at the rim. So Union really just needs to really do a better job of closing out, playing a little bit tighter defense. Yep, Bulldogs of Union 6 of 10 from long range, 10 of 14 overall pretty good if you ask me here's Alston left side pulling up for three it's a little long Boykin with a rebound now in transition Union with the numbers here's Velasquez back to Boykin swinging it around inside to Florent Florent going to work loses the handle and it's a turnover this is El Paso Pitts off the bench and out of bounds it will stay with Fisk Pitts not in the starting lineup for Fisk, which honestly kind of surprises me, but we'll get to that after this media timeout. Bulldogs with a 27-11 lead over Fisk. Here's an energy saving tip for the kitchen. Only run the dishwasher when you have a full load of dishes and let the dishes air dry. This will save hot water and electricity. Keep the filters in your home clean. Your furnace filter should be cleaned or replaced monthly. The dryer filter should be cleaned before each use. A clean filter means better airflow, and that keeps the unit running properly. And back here at the Fred Delay Gym, Coach Dave Niven, recently with his 150th career win, talking things over with his guys Union of 27-11, Alex. So far, so good for Union. Oh, it's great start and I think in games like this early on in the season you got to work on getting those good starts because as you go throughout the season it's going to be how you start a game that really builds momentum throughout the rest of the game and especially going into the second half. And with Dave Niven going over the X's and O's, Rachel you were in the huddle. Uh, talk a bit about what Coach Niven had to say to his guys. Yeah, he made sure to make a point of saying, great job running the ball and keep flying those balls up in the air. He actually did say to his team, hey, you've had two turnovers in two games, and that is two way too many. Um, so he's definitely pushing his team to excellence. That's the theme we've been seeing with Union, um, both men and women, all season. Absolutely, and two turnovers from their big men, nonetheless, Tevin Florent and Pedro Da Silva. So Post needs to do a better job controlling the basketball, but Union with nine assists, and honestly, other than those two turnovers, been almost flawless offensively. Here's Fisk going up, and converting is R.J. Scott, the senior out of Batesville, Mississippi. Here's Barnes right side. Union really spreading the floor here. Velasquez driving, jump pass to Florent, driving, spins. Smooth move by Tevin Florent, his first points of the game. And a great move, too, isolated over on that wing. A little confusion from the Fisk defense. Florent able to take advantage. Now all the way, here's Fisk and Victor Alston. El Paso Pitts driving. Now back out to Alston. Fisk with 10 to shoot. Driving is Alston. Good defense by Boykin, kicking out. To number 12, Montreal, neighbors, no good. 
And now here's Union the other way. Great defensive possession by the Union Bulldogs. Union's just playing great defensively this whole first half, I would say. In and out, here's Velasquez. Florent right side. Now to Silva. Pulls up for three. And uh, that one not in the area code. And going to go out of bounds. Coach Niven just voicing his frustration, if you will. We'll just, we'll just put a question mark over that shot right there. We don't really know why that was, hap why, why that was happening. Yeah, De Silva, a 6'10 junior out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Probably the tallest guy on the court, but outside shooting threes. Here's Pitts guarded by Velasquez, driving left side. Kicks out, and the shot is up. No good. That was number 20, R.J. Scott. Bulldogs with possession. Here's Nick driving. Bounce pass. Good defense there by Alston, tipping it out of bounds. And Casey Goodwin... Checking in for Velasquez for Union. Checking out is R.J. Scott. Checking in is number 25, Howard Smothers. I will say in those last couple of possessions, now with Casey Goodwin back into the game, obviously, but I did like Coach Niven giving Boykin a little bit of rain running that point guard position for a while. That was Todd Barnes, no good, but Pedro Da Silva with authority. See, that's what I'm talking about right there is why step out and – Attempt a three when you've got the ability to do that. Show them how it's done, Pedro. Now a foul there, or excuse me, not a foul, a travel, which is the right call. And now it will be union ball. This is a Fisk team that frequently turns the ball over. If union can get them into a habit of that, they're in a great position. And honestly, I would say even look to expand on this almost 20 point lead that they have right now. Force three there, no good by Todd Barnes and it will be Fisk the other way. Here's Pitts and it's gonna be a foul by Barnes. And that will be his first, the team's first of the half. And that's also saying something too is first team foul in roughly about 11 and a half minutes of basketball. He's playing good, solid, clean defense. Yeah, if you're Coach Niven, you got to love seeing that as a team that's given up the fewest points in the Gulf South Conference over their only two games played. So now here's Fisk. Here's Pitts for three. It was blocked. Florent with it. Back to Pitts now. Goes up. Good defense again by Union, and it's De Silva with the rebound. Now here's Goodwin driving outside. Boykin for three. Got it. They're unconscious, Logan. They're unconscious from outside, and it's great to see. This is Union basketball that we've been waiting on for quite some time. Absolutely. Boykin now two of two from long range. Union up 21. This is David Patton, the second, just checked in. Now here's Pitts, a fadeaway, no good, and Alex, not really a great shot selection there by El Paso Pitts. No, trying to do too much over in that corner, but that's pretty much all Fisk has been doing. Not a lot of organization on the offensive end. Boykin for three again. Give him another one. Why not? Why not, ladies and gentlemen? Keep shooting, young fella. And a timeout by Coach Larry Glover. Nothing going right for his team so far. They're down 24 Bulldogs with a 37-13 lead. We'll be right back after this media timeout. Community leaders are talking about Steve Beverly's TV classics, but are they serious? Do they like classic TV? Do they really watch? That's a lot of questions in one sentence, Steve. <laughs> what do they think about the host? I don't have any clear answers to that. What usually happens if you watch TV classics? A very entertaining evening for people. Watch TV Classics Saturday and Sunday at 7 on TV6. Oh, that's a good idea. Back here at the Fred Delay Gym, it's raining threes for the Union Bulldogs. Nick Velasquez and Tyree Boykin, a perfect 8 of 8 from downtown Union up to a 37-13 lead. And now Daniel uh, in that huddle, Coach Glover probably trying to find something to go right for his team. What was he telling his team in the huddle? 
Well, they're struggling to find something to go right with this team right now. But the main thing he's trying to stress to them is to stay patient and to not panic that there's a lot of game left. And above all things, they need to just play smart basketball and not lose touch with their core values and things they've practiced. Absolutely. And as you mentioned, Fisk just trying to get something to go right. And it's going to be Fisk set to inbound. But Rachel, uh, with everything going right for Union, it seems. Uh, I'm curious to see what Coach Niven would have to say to his team in a huddle. Yeah, he's just reminding his team to be very patient when it comes to certain shots and really working on their defense. Obviously, the offense is on fire right now. Um, but really focusing on the defense to make sure that they are playing the best that they can. All right, thank you, Rachel. So now Fisk and Victor Alston with the ball. Right side, this is David Patton, the second. No good. Boykin with a rebound. Here's Barnes, left side. It's a good one. Now De Silva, nice quick move, goes up. Couldn't get it to go, but he'll go to the line to shoot two. Still a strong power move, good find in there. Great ba low bounce pass entry. That's where you want to get that ball to your post players. Right on the baseline, power dribble. Power move, just a little off on the finish. And De Silva, the junior from Brazil, will shoot two. Union now one of three at the line. Tyron Davis checks in for Victor Alston for Fisk. And Fisk right now shooting six of 20 from the field, 30%. Second one is good from De Silva. And Union going with a bit of a full court trap here. Here's Davis. To Pitts, now right side, Patton. Now in the corner, this is Neighbors. Solid defense by Union, drive by Davis, goes up. And a nice move there by Tyron Davis. That's what they have to do. Right now, Fisk just has to honestly stop shooting from outside and find a way to get the basketball to the rim. Goodwin now setting things up for Union. Got plenty of time, 15 to shoot. Inside to Silva. He'll take it himself back out to Goodwin. Takes the three. No good. And the rebound will go to Patton. And here comes Fisk the other way. Here's Patton, spin, kicks out. And a pump fake, dribble drive, pull up no good by Davis. And that will go out of bounds and will stay with Fisk. If you're a union, keep just playing simple defense and stay in front of these guys right now. Let them, you know, dribble drive, pull up about 18 feet away. So right now they're having no luck shooting from Really, any distance. And that one goes out of bounds. And we'll stay with Fisk. Yeah, not a lot of shots inside the paint for no. Fisk this game as starters will check back in for Union as Keel, Wilson, and J.C. Hawkins will check back in. Inbounding is Tyron Davis. And a quick dribble drive here. No good, that was Patton with the miss. And now here comes Union the other way. And Goodwin left side, Barnes for three. Good. Everybody's getting in on the action right now. That is the ninth three-point bucket for Union. Had to do a little math right there, but nine three-pointers from outside. Yeah, our major definitely not in math. That is but, for sure. Hey, it's a good thing that Honestly, Union are making threes uh, higher than I guess we can count. It's a great thing. Barnes again for three, and it's good. Make it ten. Ten three of the half, and Union dominating so far, 44-15. And, Alex, this thing is in danger of being over before it really started here. This is, I don't know. If Union can find a way to produce this kind of offense night in, night out, this is a scary, scary team moving forward. Absolutely. Union, too, with 21 bench points. I think that's something to keep in mind as well. Right. 
I really do. I mean, you got guys like like Barnes and Boykin that can come off the bench and get you a consistent, maybe average uh, double-digit points a night. I mean, that's a lot of depth right there that's producing a lot. Good defense by Keel, and the other way, it's Alex Keel with the easy layup. Keel probably perhaps snowbirding a little bit there, but hey, it works out. Now here's Fisk and Tyron Davis. Driving now is Patton. Tough shot, and Union with another rebound. Fisk really struggling from the field. Union playing great defense, and Goodwin turns it over. And this is Patton the other way. Goes up, and he will get fouled. I believe that's Todd Barnes that got him low, and now some extracurricular activity going on here for both of these teams. I yeah, don't, don't like to see that. A little friendly exchange out on the court. I'm sure talking about dinner plans after the game. Something like exchanging that. Exchanging business cards. Keel probably just reminded him to take a quick look at the scoreboard. Something like that. <laughs> you know, a little fr friendly banter, just, if you will. Absolutely. Nothing wrong with that. It'll be Patton going to the line. This, will be, <laughs> this is Fisk's first free throw attempts of the game. And he'll miss. Pitts will check out. Craig Judy will check in. And for Union Velasquez and Boykin will check in for Barnes and Goodwin. Craig Judy, first time he's checked in for Fisk, the senior out of Queens, New York. The second of two free throws is good by Patton. And right now, Logan, I don't know what's more impressive, the fact that Union has 30 points from beyond the arc or that they've only held Fisk right now in this first half to 16 total points. And Wilson hammers it home. And Alex, that was too easy right It's way there. too easy. Union having their way on the offensive end and also getting it done on defense. A recipe for success every single time. Here's Judy against Hawkins. Now left side, this is RJ Scott, top of the key. Here's Patton going to work against Velasquez. Spin, jump shot, no good. Offensive rebound, no good. And out of bounds will be Union basketball. This got a couple of good looks there, just could not convert. That's just been the story. They've been, they've been outmatched at every single position all night long. It's been nothing but Union so far. 48-16 the score. We'll be right back after this. All right, crew, let's get started. All right. Don't ignore the law. You must call 811 at least two to three days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. There's our good friend Buster the Bulldog here. And honestly, don't need a whole lot to get this crowd fired up. They've got to like what they're seeing out of their Union Bulldogs up 48-16 over Fisk, and Alex, so far, so good. There's really Union. nothing you can complain about, honestly. You can you can try, and we'll try our best to pinpoint some things, maybe just move the ball a little bit better against that zone. But other than that, what more can you ask for? They, they've, I think Union as a team collectively is playing very well. They're communicating. They know what's going on as a unit. Absolutely, and now Daniel, uh, Coach Glover, I mean, at this point, just trying to encourage his team somehow. How does he really pull this team together to finish out the final three minutes of this first half? A lot of his players have grown frustrated to the point where they're just not sure where to go from here. And Coach tried to stress to them that, you know, if you're defending them well and they're still making the shot, you have to learn to live with something. If they're making the shot, they're making the shot. So he's just trying to encourage them to keep playing the way they're playing just the best they can. And honestly, that's about what you have to do at this point. I mean, down 32, you have to find something. Yeah, I, 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 I guess you agree wholeheartedly with Coach Glover. There's really not much you can say. Just continue to try to do the little things right because there's nothing really going well on the offensive end. They've been outmatched. They just have to continue to play hard and compete and hopefully at least try to make this a contest. Boykin now with two quick fouls. 
Had a charge on the offensive side of the ball. Reach in here, Union with five team fouls. Inside, and it's gonna be good for Craig Judy, plus the foul from Charlie Wilson. Now, it'll be Tyree Boykin checking in for Velasquez. Tough break there for Union. Yeah, just got caught. I give Judy a lot of credit, a great pump fake. It's what you're taught to do as a postman. Get Wilson up into the air, finish with contact. And the free throw, not good. Wilson with a rebound. Rebound number four for Charlie, and here's a left side, J.C. Hawkins. Union trying to move the ball quickly here, and it's gonna be a jump ball. Nice defense there by Tyrod Davis. It's gonna be fist basketball. At least one thing, if you coach Glover, you gotta be impressed coming out of the timeout with your team's defensive effort, led by Davis, who's just been all over the place wreaking havoc. And that's where it's gotta start. For Fisk, they've gotta start getting some stops, get that confidence going, and then convert it to the offensive end. Fisk with a couple of turnovers out of the timeout. Creating a couple turnovers, I should say. Now advancing the ball here. Two minutes to go here in this first half of play. Now just looking for a good shot here. Montreal neighbors from downtown. And the second three-point bucket for the Fisk Bulldogs this evening. I don't know, Logan, maybe, maybe a little spark right before the end of the half. Perhaps, and they definitely could use some momentum going into the locker room here. Outside, Tyree Boykin, can he stay perfect? No. Rebound goes to Fisk. Now the Bulldogs with a bit of a run on their own. Now they'll set up here. No good there by R.J. Scott. Here's Union the other way. Here's Wilson. He'll lay it in and the foul. And a great feed. I would, I would even say a better pass right there from Alex Keel. Realizing Wilson was running in transition, led him on with the ball. And of course, when you get Charlie Wilson in transition, he's going to finish. Absolutely. And now he'll have the opportunity for one more here. So Union now, I guess, on pace for 100 points, if you look at it. Still with a minute and a half to go here in the first. Wilson can't convert. And now it will be Fisk the other way. I guess that's one thing we could probably pick on going into the half is they've got to get better at the free throw line. And Wilson will pick up his second foul. Nice move there by Fisk and number 14, Joshua Madison. Yeah, just seeing some frustration right there from, from Wilson. Not doing a good job of staying disciplined, really jumping at a lot of things. And when you do that, you're going to be prone to some fouls. And De Silva will check in now for Charlie. What was a pretty good first half by the senior. Ten points, four boards. Altered a few shots on the defensive end. And no good. Keel with the rebound. Keel driving. Left side. Florent thought about it. And now the Union will set up. And miscommunication there. It's a turnover. Madison with a steal. And they're going to get Tevin Florent with a foul. That was a smart foul in transition, obviously. Knew he made the mistake, go up, make him earn it, the, make him earn it at the free throw line. Yeah, Union struggling offensively here as we close out the first half. Yeah, the first attempt by Madison is good. Fisk now three of six at the line in this half. Goodwin checking in for Keel. And that one goes down. Now 50 to 24. Less than a minute remains here in this first half of play. Good one taking it up the court for the Bulldogs. Picking up his dribble, kicks it out to Boykin. 
to Florent. Now Hawkins right side. Inside, nice pass to Florent, and he finishes. Nice pass there by J.C. Hawkins, picking up his third assist, excuse me, fourth assist in this half. Now coming down to final possessions here this first half. And they're going to get R.J. Scott with a travel. And back to that last possession, that's what you have to do. Again, credit Fist. They've kind of changed up their defensive mindset now with the way the game's going. Obviously realizing the 2-3 wasn't a good idea. Playing a tighter man, you've got to expose that tight man-to-man -man defense. Go back door. Nine to shoot. Here's Goodwin. Union will have the final shot. Driving, kicks out. Boykin for three. Got it. And a steal there by Florent. Almost had another one as this half comes to an end, but a good note to end on for the Union Bulldogs. Tyree Boykin, his 4-3 in the first half. Union leading 55-24 at the break. Well now, Alex into that first half, Union with 11 threes. And we're gonna go ahead and pitch it to uh, what is known as the Turkey Day 5K feature. Could not be more excited. Exactly, exactly. So we're gonna go ahead and go to that now. Union up 55-24 at the half here at Fred Delay Gym. What's your goal? Union University's degree completion program can help you get there. Union made balancing my work, my family, and school very easy. The day I walked in, they cared about me. Um, they were interested, invested in, in seeing me through to graduation. Reach your goal. Call 731-661-5163 or visit uu.edu slash reach your goal. Want to make your life a little easier? Now you can manage your Jackson Energy Authority account online. View statements, pay your bill, set up reminders, or recurring payments. Spend more time with your family, not your bills. It's easy. Just visit www.jacksenergy.com anytime and sign up. Make your life a little easier with online bill pay from Jackson Energy Authority. How many letters? Five letters. Just think about what am I doing right now? Smile. <laughs> Smile? Uh-huh. This is so easy. <laughs> Community leaders are talking about Steve Beverly's TV classics, but are they serious? Do they like classic TV? Do they really watch? That's a lot of questions in one sentence, Steve. <laughs> what do they think about the host? I don't have any clear answers to that. What usually happens if you watch TV classics? A very entertaining evening for people. Watch TV classics Saturday and Sunday at 7 on TV6. Oh, that's a good idea. Many of us will be carving the turkeys and worrying about our diets on Thanksgiving Day. But for hundreds of people in Jackson, Thanksgiving means an early start and a long run. The annual Turkey Day 5K is a joint project of Gold's Gym and RIFA. Lindsay Dawkins of RIFA and Lisa Evans of Gold's Gym are here to give us all the details. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so how, how did waking up early to run a 5K become a tradition here in Jackson? It was just kind of a, a, a thought that we had, thinking we, we wanted to do something for RIFA. And so what better day than Thanksgiving? And it was kind of something we just kind of tried, and it went over game busters. And so it has become a family tradition now that people get up, bring their families. Uh, they know it's for a great cause. And so it's, it's turned out to be quite a fun event. You get up early, you burn a few calories, have fun, family time, and then go home and enjoy the rest of your day and know you've gotten the morning off to a good cause. And how many people approximately ran in last year's race? Oh, wow. We had over 900, and we're hoping 
we just really want that thousand mark. I mean, it's yeah, yeah. it's so close <laughs> every year to get to the thousand mark. So maybe this is the year. Well, I would certainly hope it is. Um, so this joint venture of Gold's Gems and Rifa, what are some? We have some videos from last year's 5K, and we, why we watched that. Could you tell us more about what Rifa does for the community? Yeah, Rifa, our flagship is fighting hunger in our community and we do that through our soup kitchen, through our snack backpack program, through our food bank and we're just so thankful for Gold Gym. I mean they've been doing this for 13 years and they do the legwork and so we're so thankful for them to be able to have this partnership and ultimately we're feeding more people in our community through this partnership. You mentioned the uh, food bank. About this time of year around the holidays does that pick up? Do more people come to the soup kitchens and Yes, we see uh, an increase during the holidays through Thanksgiving and uh, Christmas. And we usually, through our food bank, serve about 650 families that they will get food boxes during this time. And that is, in addition to that, we also have thousands of pounds of food that will go out to other nonprofits who are serving uh, their community as well, like the Crockett Christmas Partners, that they do their own meals and stuff like that. And so a lot of food goes out during this time. And uh, with that many people serving, if individuals or church groups or organizations want to get involved in helping, how would they go about doing that? Yeah, the easiest way is to visit our website at rifajackson.org or just to call our offices and, and just figure out what the best day is and when we have volunteer opportunities available and open. But we rely heavily on volunteers from the community to help with RIFA. So going back to the 5K, um, how do you register to compete in that? There's a couple of different ways you can register. You can come by Golds, of course, and, and register there. and uh, Or you can go on races.com, racesonline.com. They will cut that off on um, Tuesday. So they will cut that off. So you can still come by Golds so and register anytime. Also, there is registration also race day. So okay. you can come by race day. But we do advise kind of registering in advance. And getting up early in the morning, obviously there are some struggles that go with that. What would be the hardest thing about running early? Oh, just make sure you've had a little something to eat and, uh, you know, come in a little bit early, get your packet and get your packet in advance so you can maybe get a little extra sleep and then, uh, you know, come and get a little warm up. But the weather looks fantastic for that day. So that'll be a plus for us. So come and get a little warm up and visit with friends and family and you'll be ready to go. Yeah, and you said you had nearly a thousand people come out last year. What kind of feedback did those competitors give to you about the race? Oh, they love it. They love this course. It's it's a it's a nice little flat course with a one one little hill in there that's mm -hmm. a surprise. But all in all, it's a really good little flat course to run, and uh, we have a lot of people on the course for support. So we have some really competitors that come. Yeah. All right. And re recapping here, give us just the time and the location for this race. Okay. It starts at 8 o'clock a.m. at Gold's Gym, and we're on Carriage House Drive. Uh, there's plenty of parking all around that day. And uh, like I said, if you want to come and get your packet that day, you do need to come early. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Hard to watch, isn't yeah, it? You're sorry. Sorry. Does this make it easier? Sorry. 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 How about this? How stupid you are. Maybe you should just look how away. Stupid are you? Tell me how stupid you are. I want to hear it. Is that better? It's hard to watch, but if you or someone you know is in an abusive relationship, make the call. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Community leaders are talking about Steve Beverly's TV classics, but are they serious? Do they like classic TV? Do they really watch? That's a lot of questions in one sentence, Steve. <laughs> what do they think about the host? I don't have any clear answers to that. What usually happens if you watch TV classics? A very entertaining evening for people. Watch TV classics Saturday and Sunday at 7 on TV6. Oh, that's a good idea.
A dominating performance in the first half by the Union Bulldogs. 55-24 is the score. Union leading over Fisk. And let's go ahead and take a look at some of the halftime stats here. Uh, first, we'll start with, with Fisk. And Alex, just not a lot going on for the Fisk Bulldogs in this first half. Well, it's pretty simple to say that Fisk is struggling in all aspects of the game. They're outnumbered. They're outmatched. And Union just seems to be winning the battle all night long. That's pretty much all you can say about it. Fisk shooting right now a 29% from the field, 33% from three-point land. Right now they're being out-rebounded. I think that's been a huge stat right here as I kind of previewed as one of the keys to the game was rebounding. Union leading that battle 23-11. to Also just a, a random stat. It's not a huge deal, but it's important kind of to me too because it means – that possessions are limited. You look at second chance points. Union only with four, but Fisk with zero. They have not had many opportunities on second on second chance. That means one shot, rebound, going the other way with the basketball. And if you're Union, that's an excellent way to play defense. Absolutely. And for Union, really, it's been more of a team effort uh, defensively. And on the offensive side of the ball, three players and double figures. Uh, but, but, again, it's also been a team effort because for Union, 26 yeah. bench points. Uh, Absolutely. Talk a bit about how the Bulldogs have performed in this first half because a lot went right for Union. Well, just starting off, Tyree Boykin coming off the bench with 12 points. Also, you look at just some guys like Todd Barnes. Uh, he was quiet in our first coverage against Freed Hardman. And he's come out with a nice seven points, contributing in many ways as well. And then you've got your stars. You've got Velasquez heating up from outside, 15 points, five threes in the game. Charlie Wilson already with 10 and four. Casey Goodwin just doing a little bit of everything. Six assists, two points, two rebounds. Mr. Consistency, if you will. But you just take a look at all the way down the stat sheet, and Union leads in almost every single category. And if you're Coach Niven, that's what you got to have every single night. Uh, maybe not to this certain degree, but you want to be dominating all aspects of the game. And that's going to give you a good chance to win. Another thing, too, fast break points. Union, I think, was a, a big key was slowing down the tempo in the half-court game. However, they're leading fast break points 10-0. to Assist, 18 assists from the Bulldogs. They're swinging the ball. They're finding the open man. They're making the extra pass as to Fisk three assist as they're just dribbling up the ball maybe one pass one shot and one and done situations and also you just take a look at that entire list of stats and union leads in almost every single category you look at the points off the turnovers they're making use of the turnovers that they're creating it's just an all-around great performance from the union bulldogs and dare i say coach niven with maybe a little bit of smile on his face absolutely alex and you know, if, if we could nitpick one thing about Union, it, it is free throws, as you see there, 40% from the foul line, two of five. Barnes, one of two. De Silva, one of two. And Charlie Wilson, 0 of one. But other than that, just an absolutely dominating performance yep. in this first half for the Union Bulldogs. Only one person who has played has not scored, and that's J.C. Hawkins. But don't take that as that he's playing bad because he has yeah. four boards, four assists, doing all of the little things, I think, extremely well. That's exactly what you want in a game where certain stars are shining because you take a look at Velasquez. He probably doesn't have 15 points if Hawkins doesn't make that extra pass. He probably doesn't have uh, – he or you look at Boykin. He probably doesn't have 12 points if guys aren't getting defensive stops and getting him open looks on the offensive end. So it's those it, – it, it is a collective team unit. And that's the beauty of team basketball when every single piece comes together. It's fantastic. And I'm honestly getting worked up just talking about it. I love it so much is when you have a unit like this in the Bulldogs, even early on in the season. Honestly, I'll be straight up. I wasn't expecting all the pieces to really click. I was expecting maybe Coach Niven to find, you know, different lineups that were working well. But already third game into the season, the pieces are starting to line up, and you're seeing a great product here on the court. Absolutely, and this is a union team that was picked ninth in the yeah. Gulf South Conference poll. Oh, we're going to surprise some people. How about it? Absolutely. How about it? Absolutely. <laughs> because you, you, and you especially look at the Gulf South Conference, one of the better conferences yeah. in Division II. Right. I know Christian Brothers will be a tough test. Yeah, will be. Always. Uh, and you, you look at guys like Jeff Larkin and Adam yeah. Dieball. Uh, what must Union do to continually improve to face these tough matchups like Christian Brothers? Continue to play team basketball. Whatever's happening right now, tonight, is what they've got to do. 
and probably escalate it to a, to a higher degree when it comes to conference play because you're looking at a team like Christian Brothers. They, are, they play this style of basketball, but to that higher degree. They're a great team with a lot of great individuals but that know how to play together. Also at Valdosta State the same way. Just an all-around good team. So you just got to step that up and play that play that style of basketball. Absolutely. And Coach Niven uh, in the pregame show mentioned that uh, it's a possibility that there won't be one guy that comes out and, and, and be a superstar of this year's team. And so you're absolutely right in that it's got to take a team effort. So, but, but looking more now at this game, what must Fisk do in this second half to at least try to make this a bit of a more competitive game? I say stick to that man-to-man -man style. Whatever Coach Glover thought he was doing, and no disrespect to the man, but the zone defense was not working in the first half. Clearly, Union was getting all sorts of opportunities. Whether they were knocking them down or not, Union had all opportunities inside and outside. Get away from the zone defense, put pressure on the guards, force Union out of their style of offense, force Union to get a little bit uncomfortable. And then the outside shot's not falling, try to get to the rim, try to draw fouls. The only person really in major foul trouble right now, Charlie Wilson has two fouls. Go at him, try to get him out of the game early. Yeah, and if you're Union, I guess that game plan would be keep doing what you're doing. You have 55 points through one half on pace for well over 100 points. I think uh, if the Bulldogs just keep on doing what they're doing, then I think that uh, this is going to be just a continuation of the domination that we saw in that first half. Yeah. Can't get complacent, though. Still Absolutely. have to continue to play hard, competitive basketball. Got to keep the foot on the gas. And so it will be Union basketball here to start off this second half. It's Hawkins inbounding to Goodwin, and we're underway. And uh, I believe they're going to call a push off on Velasquez. That'll be his first. And early on, Alex, a, a push off there, giving Fisk an opportunity here on offense. And you saw you're going to force Union to make some mistakes when you put that pressure on the guards. Fisk swinging the ball around now. Here's Madison driving in against Velasquez. No good. Strong rebound by Wilson. And now here's Goodwin the other way. And they're going to call a foul on Tyron Davis. That'll be his second foul as well. Coach Glover's definitely want to keep him in the game with the intensity that he brings to the table. And it'll be Hawkins inbounding it. Five on the court for the Bulldogs. It's Velasquez, Hawkins, Goodwin, Keel, and Wilson. And for Fisk, it's Tyron Davis. Number 23, Addison Miller, Keel for three, no good. Alston, Victor Alston with a rebound. Joshua Madison and RJ Scott also out there for Fisk. Again, fantastic execution on that play call right there. Keel's just got to knock down the outside shot. Here is uh, Tyron Davis, top of the key, 15 to shoot. Driving against Hawkins, pulls up. Nice shot there by the freshman Tyron Davis. Nothing too flashy, very simple. Get to that baseline, in rhythm, in stride, hit the shot. And uh, a pass by Keel goes over the head of Charlie Wilson, out of bounds, and a couple of quick turnovers for the Bulldogs here early in the second half. Yeah, Union seeming a bit out of sorts. A lot of people would say, well, you know, the Bulldogs can, they can allow themselves to a little room for some turnovers. Not in this game. You ask Coach Nevin, no. This is a team that you might as well put the score right back at zero. They're still going to come out and play very hard. Absolutely. Fisk, a team that is 6-1 this season on a six-game winning streak. Here's Hawkins in transition for three. No good. Victor Alston with a rebound. Perhaps if you're Niven, Coach Niven, Probably wanted your team to be a little bit more patient there. Miss there. Here's Hawkins now to Goodwin. Fast break here. Bounce pass to Wilson. Goes up. Finishes. And the foul. Charlie Wilson in transition is an absolute nightmare. Why opposing players decide to go up and contest his shot, I will never know. Wilson now a perfect six of six from the field. 12 points, looking to hit his first free throw of the night. Mouth guard out, all of Steph Curry, and he knocks down the free throw. Whatever it takes. Now here's Tyron Davis, almost overthrew Joshua Madison there. 
Left side, this is Scott. Now Davis setting up the offense here. 12 to shoot. Inside to Scott. Turnaround jumper at the elbow, no good, and it's going to be the over the back foul by Tyron Davis. That'll be his third. That's a big foul right there, and what we'll probably see is Coach Glover pull him out of the game in the next couple of minutes. And already Montreal neighbors, the junior at the scores table, Wilson gets his pocket picked. And here is Madison, another way, bounce pass. Nice layup by number 23, Addison Miller. Now quickly the other way, here's Union. Keel going up. He'll get fouled, and he'll make the shot. What a move, what a drive, what a finish by the sophomore, Alex Keel. The up and under move proved true with the contact. A little kiss off the glass, and it's beautiful for Mr. Keel. Keel now with four. Chance to make it five at the line. Montreal Neighbors checks in. And Keel nails the free throw. 61-28 now the score. Here's Alston. Fisk staying patient. Alston top of the key, not a lot of ball movement here. Inside, this is Scott going up against Wilson, no good. Rebound will go to Joshua Madison and Fisk, their first second chance points tonight. Keel, wild jumper goes in. Now this game starting to pick up a little bit. Neighbors will slow it down. Union really wanting to run in transition after a made basket, and it's worked out for him so far. Inside, here's Scott against Wilson. The right hook, no good. And Union having a hard time rebounding right now. Another offensive rebound for Fisk. Fisk only had three offensive rebounds in the entire first half. And it's gonna be Union basketball after the turnover. Pedro Da Silva checks in for Charlie Wilson. Now here's Goodwin. Velasquez top of the key. Inside to Silva. Pulls up, no good. And rebound goes to Montreal Neighbors. And a nice shot there by Joshua Madison, getting it around to Silva. Tough shot, but it goes. Madison already at 12 points as he finds his way into double digits. And you're seeing a little bit of some signs of Fisk and what they can do in transition. Yeah, Fisk really struggled in that first half creating their own shot now, doing a better job of it here in this second half. We have immediate timeout at the Fred. Union still with a commanding lead over Fisk. Want to make your life a little easier? Now you can manage your Jackson Energy Authority account online. View statements, pay your bill, set up reminders, or recurring payments. Spend more time with your family, not your bills. It's easy. Just visit www.jacksenergy.com anytime and sign up. Make your life a little easier with online bill pay from Jackson Energy Authority. Back here at Union, where the host Bulldogs have a 63-32 lead over Fisk, but Alex has been a back and forth start to the second half here. Yeah, I think Fisk come out of the locker room, made some adjustments, maybe... <laughs> Maybe woke up and realized, hey, we're playing a basketball game tonight. And so I'm liking the energy that Fisk is bringing. They're getting out in transition. They're actually finishing for a change. And now Union up to the test. How do they respond? Absolutely. Now Daniel, Coach Glover, probably liking what he's seeing out of his team coming out of the locker room. Well, as you just said, 
there is a renewed sense of energy and there's a renewed sense of hope on the sideline. Coach is still preaching fundamentals, starting with rebounding and just telling his guys to keep fighting. And a quick foul here. We'll see who they call that on. And it'll be number 20, RJ Scott. Now Rachel, uh, probably not what Coach Niven was hoping to see out of his guys uh, coming out of the locker room. What did he tell his guys there in the huddle? Well, for what we saw in the huddle, most of it was actually the players encouraging themselves and really coaching among themselves. Um, you know, Charlie Wilson would yell something to Pedro and back and forth. And um, these guys are very much are building on each other. They are such a team that they're able to do this. And then Niven's able to come in and say, hey, you need to make sure that this is what you're going to do with defense. Um, and he does a lot of coaching from the side, as we can hear. Absolutely. And Casey Goodwin draining his first three of the game. Now one of four from long range. That's five points. And on the other end, it's a foul. And it'll be R.J. Scott at the line, shooting two. Well, and just like what Rachel was saying is that's what's going to get Union to the next level is players, specifically those seniors that she was talking about, stepping up on the floor and being those floor generals, making plays, commanding their troops, if you will, and really just getting everybody organized. And that's how you get a collective team unit because you've got to rally around someone who actually knows what they're talking about. Get those guys to fall under that leadership and play smart basketball together. Howard Smothers checking in for Fisk. That foul was on Alex Keel, his first. 66-33 now the score. Hand off to Goodwin. Now Bulldogs swinging it around. Bounce pass, dangerous pass. Hawkins with it, Keel for three. And it rims out. And he struggled from outside. He really has, which is unfortunate to see. Also an unfortunate circumstance right there is you saw Miller just wipe out yeah, in a, transition. A bullet pass there by number 12, Montreal Neighbors. And I guess the pass was so hard that Anderson Miller couldn't handle it. It's a nice possession catch there, if you will, if this was a, a football game. But since you're playing basketball, it's a travel. So it will be Bulldog basketball and something to keep an eye on. Fisk with six fouls as a team. And we have 14 minutes, a little under 15, to play in this second half. And Union's going to be put to the test at the free throw line at some point. We'll see how they respond. Pass to De Silva for three. Got it. And he can step out and hit that shot, but it's got to be when he's in stride. Great extra pass from Goodwin, making it happen from outside, Mr. Silva. And a turnover there by Fisk. Will be Union ball. Here's Keel. Keel driving to Silva. Union spreading it out. Playing five out here. Now inside to Silva, back out to Keel. Dribble drive, pull up, good. That was a beautiful possession. A great touch pass right there from De Silva. Keel recognizing, hey, I haven't been shooting well from outside. Take that one dribble inside, knock down the 15 foot jumper. It's pure from the baseline, ladies and gentlemen. Here is Neighbors now. A quick three is good by Addison Miller. Fisk, their third three of the night. Keel driving. Now back out to Goodwin. Now Todd Barnes in the game and he traveled. Bulldogs now with eight turnovers, three so far in the second half. I will say Fisk has actually done a good job of playing Union pretty even this half. I would like to go back and we'll, we'll find out at the end of the game, check the box scores, because I think this is a brand new Fisk team that we're seeing in the second half. Step back jumper is good by Joshua Madison. Just inside the three point line, probably not the best shot selection, but it went in. That one goes out of bounds, stays with Union. Oh, he had a hand in his face, but that's that's confidence right there as a shooter. Step back on the baseline, know your limitations, 
And able to hit that jumper. It's pretty, pretty shot from Mr. He, Madison. You think he yelled Kobe? Oh, yes, he was fading away there. It was, it was very Kobe-esque, if you will. I definitely agree with that. And Alex Keel with a strong finish. And he's improved tremendously. If, if we were giving awards, Alex Keel is hands down most improved from the 2016-2017 season. He has, you did not see that last year. He has 11 tonight, and you're right, Alex. I, I think from a physical standpoint, he just looks like a stronger he does. player. He does. And he does. Bulked up in the offseason. Hard work. And it's paying off. And Goodwin will check out. Tyree Boykin will come in. Boykin with 12 points off the bench, four threes. Here's Keel. Fisk now bringing the pressure. Now we'll back off. We'll have a media timeout. In about 30 seconds here. Here's Keel driving. Looking, good defense here by Fisk. Barnes pulls up, and it's good. Todd Barnes, nine points now. Some would say perhaps a quiet nine points tonight. And he'll pick up his third foul on the defensive end. But I tell you, I, I love the frame of Todd Barnes. Very athletic. I think he's somebody that down the stretch could play a huge role in this Union team. Yeah, he's a very smooth player. He's not limited to a position. I don't think you can pinpoint where Todd Barnes fits in the lineup because he can play all positions. Maybe not the five, uh, as he's not built as a post player, but he can handle the ball, he can shoot from outside, he can defend, and that's what you want out of an all-around basketball player like Barnes. Barnes, the 6'5 junior out of Altadena, California. Transfer from Pasadena City College. And a three there by Montreal Neighbors. Montreal neighbors not from Canada, instead from Oxford, Mississippi. Going up is Todd Barnes, he'll get fouled. Neighbors the transfer from Jackson State University. And we're gonna have a media timeout here at the Fred Union with a dominating 75-41 lead over Fisk. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Yeah. 1,000 megabit speed, now available to any E-plus broadband internet customer. This gig-enhanced infrastructure has the capacity to increase speeds in the future. E-plus broadband, what many interpreted as JA's entrance into cable television, was actually the foundation of an unparalleled communications infrastructure. Looking out for Jackson's economic and lifestyle future is all a part of JEA today. There's Buster the Bulldog here at Fred DeLay Gym and a 75-41 lead for the Union Bulldogs. Under 12 minutes to go here in this second half. And Alex, really a back and forth second half here so far. What are you seeing from both of these teams? Well, they're playing pretty even. Fisk has come out, like I said, a brand new team. But I think the margin in the first half was just too much. That's a 34-point deficit right now with 11.47 left to go. With the way Union's been playing, they're still playing pretty well. Give them that much credit. And it's just too much for Fist to overcome right now. Absolutely. And, Daniel, we've seen multiple defenses run by Fisk. Uh, any word on more adjustments that Coach Glover may have for his team there? The main thing he's pushing now is that they need to continue pushing themselves. He said they've got about five minutes to make this more of a ball game, and he wants them to challenge themselves and see if that's something that they can accomplish. All right, there is Daniel Potts as Barnes drains the first free throw, and Rachel, uh, Coach Niven, probably in that next push of four minutes there, probably liked what he saw from his team a little bit more. Uh, what was he saying to his team in his huddle there? Well, the first thing was that that, that foul was just completely uncalled for, and um, he's definitely trying to train these minds and um, really bodies of his team um, and using this game much as a training tool. Absolutely is. Montreal Neighbors on fire for Fisk as there's another turnover. Neighbors with it. Neighbors with eight points now. And I'll say this as I think they're going to get Barnes on the foul, which will be his fourth, unfortunately about Fisk and what Coach Glover had to say. You're looking at a team 
right now, which the whole game of basketball, it's a game of runs. I think Coach Glover hit it perfectly saying what we do in the next four to five minutes is going to be huge. One, it's going to be a definition of what's to come and how they respond if they ever get down in this situation again throughout the remainder of the season. However, it again, five minutes will determine this game. If Fisk can actually make this a game, then I think the whole dynamic of their style and everything that's going to be happening here uh, for the remainder of this contest is going to change. But if they can't find an answer, then this game might as well wrap it up, put a Christmas bow on it, and call it done. Too easy there for Nick Velasquez. Now six of six from downtown, 18 points for Velasquez. Out of bounds, and it will go to Union. Union now 14 of 25 from downtown. Five out there on the court for Union. You have Tyree Boykin with the ball, Velasquez, Florence, De Silva, and J.C. Hawkins. Tyree Boykin with a nice drive there, finishes, and the contact there, he'll have one more. And right now, it, I don't know what your standpoint is, is if you are Coach Glover, really what the, what the answer is for your team, other than just continue to coach your guys and Really encourage them to continue to play hard. Union has so many weapons right now that Fisk can't stop. And so even if you do single in on one guy, how are you going to stop the next one that comes off the bench? And that's just been the main story, as Union's just been great on all levels. And shot missed there by Fisk. Here's Boykin the other way. Union, I mean, to your, to your point, I don't know if it's a bad defense or if Union is just on fire overall. It's a legal screen there by Pedro Da Silva, that'll be his first team's fifth. The Union shooting 71% from the field right yeah. now. Yeah, I, that, that stat right there just proves it. I don't think it's bad defense. Fisk is playing aggressive. Um, as a unit, maybe, they've been a little discombobulated out of sorts, but credit Union's offense. They have been playing efficiently. They've been playing very well, and it really has just been a, a token to the capabilities that are to come in the future. Absolutely, five Union Bulldogs in double figures. And another foul there against De Silva, that'll be his second. Not a lot of fouls in the first half, second half turning into a bit of a foul fest. As from now on, both teams will be in the bonus. And Malik Yant in the game now for Fisk. The shot by Smothers, no good. Rebound by Boykin, and that one will go out of bounds. And it'll be Union ball. Fisk trying to sell it as if it went off Boykin. But we had a pretty good view of that, Alex. Yeah, we did. Clear tip of the ball. Well, when you're... <laughs> When you're down 39 points, might as well try to give yourself a shot. Absolutely. I have no problem with that. Here's one thing I want to see, as we're going to have a quick foul call. But to key in on one player individually, and I believe he's actually going to go to the free throw line, I want to see for the remainder of this game, and again, it's all going to depend on how Coach Niven plays the lineup, but I want to see Tyree Boykin at that sole point guard spot. He's been in the game and he's played well, but – the majority of that's come from when Casey Goodwin's in the game and he's kind of playing second fiddle. I want to see Boykin take command at the official point guard position because that's going to be a good sign of what's going to come. Also, you never know what's going to happen with Casey Goodwin. This is a, a long season. You never know if injury is going to take him down. You never know if he's going to find himself in foul trouble one game. And who's the next guy up? Boykin's your next guy at the point guard position. So I want to see some positive things as how he leads this team and how he facilitates the basketball for Union. The freshman Larson Ashford with his first points of the game. And you're right, Alex. I, I think Boykin, I mean, he's gotten a lot of minutes at that point guard position, and uh, Goodwin hasn't really played too much here tonight. When all you know, all things considered, and honestly, in, in a blowout like this, you, yeah. I mean, you probably want to rest guys like Goodwin. But Boykin has played extremely well off the bench tonight. He has, and credit his other teammates getting him open. But now we're starting to see signs of Boykin creating for himself. 
And so now it's when he steps up and embraces that role that he's going to be the floor general out there. I want to see some positive things. I want to see, really, Boy can just step up, mature, and play grown man basketball out here because it, it's no secret. Casey Goodwin's the go-to guy when it comes to the facilitator, when it comes to the point guard who's going to handle the basketball. But you never know if that situation is going to change throughout the course of a game. And this is moments where, for Coach Niven, you got to look at Tyree Boykin and see these positive things as, is this a guy I can trust in late game situations? Montreal neighbors couldn't convert the front end of the one and one so it will be Union ball the other way. Hawkins for three, no good. Hawkins still struggling from the field. Oh, He's been three. cold too. From beyond the arc. Still scoreless, I believe. Absolutely, you're right. The only player that has played to not score tonight. But, you know, in nights where you are cold, you can step up many other ways, and yeah. I think Hawkins has done he that. He has. He has. And Velasquez with his first field goal that's not a three-pointer now has 20. Well, surprise, Nick Velasquez decided to go inside the lane with that one. Back-to-back -back games with 20 or more points for Velasquez. Jump shot. No good by Ashford. Todd Barnes set to check in for the Bulldogs after the next dead ball. Union swinging it around the perimeter. Here's Florent driving, and we're going to go the other way. And the Silva, four fouls, I believe all of them have come in this half. So new faces here for Union. As number 35, Caleb Ball, the freshman from right here in Jackson, Tennessee, will see his first playing time of the season. Now we're going to see if Union collectively as a whole can, can finish a game with this unit that they have on the floor. We saw a couple of nights ago when Coach Campbell's women's team was out here. He's a little frustrated about how his second unit performed. We'll see how Coach Niven's second unit performs in a game that is obviously commanded by Union, but you still want to get good production out of your second string players. Montreal neighbors with 11 after that jump shot. Yeah, absolutely. Only one starter remaining out there, and that's Nick Velasquez. Uh, Velasquez with 20. Got to wonder when they're going to pull him out, but a great performance by these Union Bulldogs tonight. Todd Barnes outside for three. No good. Nice rebound by Florent. Back to Barnes. He'll finish strong. And the foul. Excellent finish from Todd Barnes. I do not want to take away from that, but what a fight down low by Tevin Florent to even create that scenario. Great offensive rebound by the freshman. Absolutely, and a fresh five now for Fisk. And we'll rehash the starting five for both of these teams after this media timeout. 86-48 here at the Fred. This message brought to you by FEMA. Be fire safe during the holidays. Only use decorations that are non-flammable or flame retardant. Check holiday lights each year for frayed wires or excessive wear, and do not link more than three strands. Never leave a burning candle unattended. Consider using battery-operated flameless candles which look and smell like real candles. If your celebration includes a natural tree, keep it away from any heat source or exit. Water your tree daily to keep it from becoming dry. Learn more at usfa.fema.gov. Back here at Fred Delay Gym, Union with a commanding 86-48 lead over Fisk. And I want to remind you fans that after tonight, it's going to be a while before we're back on air. It will be. Be a quick minute. Absolutely. Next broadcast will be January 13th. It'll be a doubleheader against the good old Argonauts yep. from West Florida in a Gulf South Conference matchup. So be sure to tune in in January. I know it's a, a long ways away, but... Uh, I, I believe this Gulf South Conference will be a fun one to watch for both men and women. Well, and that's a good thing to point out, too, is for you viewers, yes, it's going to be a while before we're going to be covering Union basketball due to the Christmas break. However, when we pick back up, we're going to be right in the middle of conference play, and I'm excited. Absolutely. And, Rachel, uh, probably not a lot to talk about in the huddle if you're Coach Niven, probably talking about uh, just little things to work on perhaps. Yeah, he said definitely work on that man-to-man -man, um, instead of zoning um, when it comes to defense and um, really focusing on rebounding. 
And for them, like I said earlier, they're doing very well offensively, but he keeps um, pr pushing them to excellence and pushing them to really work out these extra little kinks that have been going on in their um, defensive structure so that it won't be a problem in future games. Absolutely, and a foul by Fisk. That is number 11, Dozier Thomas, the freshman from Fort Walton Beach, Florida. And at the 5-4, Fisk, it's El Paso Pitts, Dozier Thomas, Addison Miller, Ricky Brow Bowser. And out of bounds, it will be Union Basketball. And rounding out the lineup is Craig Judy for the Fisk Bulldogs. Well, just taking a look ahead at Union's schedule, got some games, some not obviously some non-conference games, some games to really prep the season. Another rematch this Saturday, actually hosting Lemoyne Owen. And they travel to Melbourne, Florida for a couple of games with North Greenville and Florida Tech. But then they really just start right in it on November 30th, before we even get to December. Road game at Mississippi College. So already getting into Gulf South Conference play. Again, it's going to start quick. There's 14 teams in the conference. It's a, huge, it's a pretty big conference. And like you said, very talented conference as well. Nick Velasquez, need I say more? Seven threes for Velasquez. Really is a lucky number for him. Absolutely, had seven threes last time out against LeMoyne Owen and 23 points. Well, looky here, 23 points, seven threes this time out for Nick Velasquez. He's got a special formula that he goes by. He knows exactly what he's doing. No good there by Fisk and it'll be Union basketball. This guy, I think, has done a better job of rebounding offensively in the second half, and really, just overall, I think the performance by Fisk has been a lot better this second half. Yeah, they've been really a lot more aggressive, played smarter basketball, but Union's just been too much. All night long, it's been all Union Bulldogs, and right there, just easy one-on-one -on -one baskets, Tevin Florent showing exactly why he's been playing some pretty good minutes early on in this season. Florent with six now, a nice drive there. Tell this fist defense just worn out. Three, no good. That was Addison Miller. Velasquez with a rebound. Now taking it up, here's Boykin to Velasquez. Thought about it, now kicks it back out. Bulldogs staying patient here. With 12 to shoot, ball top of the key. Seven to shoot, here's Boykin driving left, pulls up over Pitts, he oh, nailed it. No, no, no. Don't do it to him, Tyree, don't do it. My goodness, Logan. Tyree Boykin. If you're under the age of 13, cover your eyes. That was a nasty move at the top of the key. Not safe for work. Missed shot there, Caleb Ball with the rebound, and here is Tyree Boykin. Here's Velasquez left side. And tried to force it inside, but instead it's turned over. Outside with three, no good by Dozier Thomas. Now Velasquez and the Bulldogs will just take a timeout. And I believe it's just a timeout for substitutions. Let's see here. Either way. I think we're gonna keep it right here. I think, I think we're gonna keep it out right here. I think the argument was that since it's the first time out of the half that it should be a media timeout, ah, but okay. now it's a media timeout. Got it sorted okay. out. It's all good. It's all good. But either way, Bulldogs with a commanding lead over Fisk. We'll be right back after this. United. United in academic excellence and research. United in love for Christ and biblical truth. United in service and caring for people. United for you. 
At Union University, no matter what you study, you are part of a close-knit community dedicated to your success. Union University, united in spirit, grounded in truth. Back here at the Fred DeLay Gym, and Mize didn't deceive me in that Union commercial. I believe we saw a young Alex Northcutt. Back in back in the day. Back in the old, good old days. Longer hair, just taking a stroll down the campus of Union. Back when times were a little simpler. You know? Absolutely. What, what was that, your freshman year? Is that I think right? it was. I think it was freshman year. God, full two years ago. I'm aging, Logan. Time you got to stop it. Time flies. It does. Well, Daniel, uh, at this rate, uh, I don't know what more could be said if you're Coach Glover. Well, he was perfectly blunt in the timeout. He told his players they were not going to win this game, but he wants them to finish the game the right way, keep taking their shots, and hold their heads high as much as they can as they finish out this game. Yeah, and you don't want to see your team give up, even though you're down by, well, pretty much uh, close to 50 now. So... Either way, here's ball, jump shot, it's good. And how about that, Caleb Ball, first points of his college career. Everybody getting in on the action, great to see the young guys step in and make an impact. And obviously, take a look, if you saw on the near side of your screen, all the union bench getting excited as well. That's a good sign of a team. And now we'll actually have a media timeout here, but Caleb Ball, the freshman from right here in Jackson went to Dyer County. His first points of his college career. Well, now I guess the story is, will we see 100? We'll take a quick commercial break and find out right after this. Here's an energy saving tip for the kitchen. Only run the dishwasher when you have a full load of dishes and let the dishes air dry. This will save hot water and electricity. Keep the filters in your home clean. Your furnace filter should be cleaned or replaced monthly. The dryer filter should be cleaned before each use. A clean filter means better airflow, and that keeps the unit running properly. And there you see uh, Dave Niven's son, as we like to call him, Minnie Niven, firing up the team here as the Bulldogs ahead 99-48 over Fisk. Three minutes, 45 seconds to go here in this second half. It'll be Addison Miller at the line. Man, excited that college basketball is kicking off as well. You know, like at the, even at the Division I level, finally getting some air time. You know, it's always good when you can turn on the TV when you're getting ready for class at 10 o'clock, 10.30 in the morning and – there's college basketball on the television, just right on ESPN. Just a, a pleasant gift. Excited for this season, a good showcase the other night with some of the top teams, Logan. Absolutely. Michigan State, Duke. Duke with a solid win over the Spartans, even without good old Bagley. Uh, Bagley went out with an eye injury and still somehow found a way to win. Offensive rebound here. A block by Todd Barnes. What a swat there. Uh, it, you're absolutely right, Alex. Uh, I think Duke with Grayson Allen, that's going to be one of the toughest teams to beat this season. How good is Duke going to be, though? That's the question. Can they take the next step and get to the Final Four? Absolutely. And, and then uh, the later game that night, Kentucky and Kansas, was kind of surprised that uh, how close that game was given that Kentucky – really had not looked very good at the start of the season. Uh, Utah Valley, Vermont, giving Kentucky run for their money, but they kept it close against Kansas, and you know Kentucky always a team to be reckoned with yep. come March. Starting five freshmen, as always. As always. The one-and-done program. They're still going to be good. They have got some great talent over there. Always, you know, every year it's just someone new that pops up and surprises you. We'll see who that team's going to be this year. Also, some good games happening this weekend. College football to be keeping an eye out on the next couple of weeks. Absolutely, Alex. And getting close to playoff time. But here at Union, the jump shot no good by Todd Barnes. And Caleb Ball with the rejection off the backboard. The offensive rebound. By Dozier Thomas, he'll get fouled by Ball. 
And both teams are going to be in the double bonus from here on out. And it, just based on the double bonus and the way that the, it's going to feel like the final three minutes, 18 seconds, will be more like 20 minutes and 18 seconds. That usually is the case winding down. Seeing some good things from Caleb Ball. I really am. Coming off the bench, getting some minutes in a game where and when you're up by 49, really nothing else to lose right here. But we're seeing some good things from the young guy, and looking ahead, that's where the mindset has to be. Obviously, this year he's probably not going to get a ton of minutes. He's probably not going to produce just very much coming off the bench. But you look ahead. It's these guys that you need to expose early on in their first couple of years here in college, and that's going to propel them to success later on in their career. And the three no good by J.C. Hawkins. And his cold, cold spell continues. Other than shooting, he's had a great performance, but he's unable to get the shot to go. Inside, good defense by Ball. Shot was no good by Judy. Now Barnes with it. And pass is intercepted by Dozier Thomas. And a good job by Tevin Florent preventing the dunk, but he'll get called with a foul. And Union getting pretty sloppy in these last couple of minutes. It's one thing to slow the tempo and really try to work this clock, but it's another thing to play sloppy and turn the basketball over, and that is not what you want if you're Coach Dave Niven. And David Patton at the line drains the first. And the second of two goes down. So yeah, thing, go ahead. I, I, I was just about to say go ahead, but I, the point I was about to make is if you're Coach Dave Niven, you don't want to see this team really whimper to the finish line. You want to see them finish strong, no matter what lineup's in the game. Well, they're going to have to learn how to do that at some point because believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to wind up every single game up 40 points. So they're going to have to learn how to finish strong in tight game situations. For instance, connect at the free throw line. Quit turning the ball over. It's the little things that are going to propel them to success. If they can't get those right towards the end. That's going to be a, a tough thing for Union moving forward. And Union just seemingly can't get to that 100-point mark as Boykin misses both free throws and a foul about 90 feet away from the basket. And Fisk will have two free throws. Or I guess not. Thought it was a foul, but either way. You know, just focused on some negative aspects. However, it is good to look at it. Just both programs here at Union, both the girls and the guys teams, having some early success, having their way with some teams. Union we saw last weekend, some big, big wins over Barry and Nova Southeastern, the guys coming back home, playing a great game here, and they're really establishing their momentum, winning early games in games that they're expected to win, and putting out, I don't know if you will, say a mark for other teams to look at. May put Union on the map, because this is a team, I think, one, the, the girls are gonna be solid. We've already solidified that, they're expected to do well in conference play. The guys, on the other hand, haven't really been picked to do too much this season. However, I think they're going to surprise a lot of people. And Barnes can't connect. Union stalling at 99 points here. And that's an obvious charge there by Ricky Bowser. I was wondering we were going to get an offensive foul in this game. It took us 18 minutes and 20 seconds, but we got it. Absolutely. Now Union basketball here, Fisk with full court pressure. A little full court man here. Logan, you heading home for Thanksgiving? Absolutely, heading home Big to- Big plans with the family. Good old Mayfield, Kentucky. Ah, I'm sure- Wonderful Mayfield. I'm sure everyone's heard of that area before, but- If you haven't, you need to go there. Absolutely, near Paducah. Maybe some people have heard of Paducah or- Murray. Favorite Thanksgiving food, what you got? Oh, I mean, there are so many great options, Alex. I mean, <laughs> can't, can't <laughs> Don't break this down from an analytical you know, standpoint. 
<laughs> broadcaster my, in you it, it, screaming, yeah, right? <laughs> it, it absolutely is. I mean, I, I can't give a simple answer. As Tyree Boykin gets Union over the 100-point mark, he has 20 tonight. What a night. What a night for Tyree. I will say that. Well, to answer the question that everyone's been wanting to know, I, I, you can't go wrong with the turkey when done right. It's consistent. Yeah. yeah. It's got to be consistent. I'll and tell you one thing. My mom makes the best sweet potato casserole with the brown sugar and the pecans. Throw a little bit of marshmallows on there, melt it on top. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. That's enough to make your heart stop right there. I will yeah. say that's, that is – I'm looking forward to that. Alex, I, say I, that I think sure. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go to the Northcutt household for come Thanksgiving. Come on, man! If, come if on, that's okay brother. With you. That's what I'm talking about. One of two at the line was Ricky Bowser, the senior guard from Nashville. And final minute here in this second half, and Union needs to hurry here. They get it across half court. Nice feed to Ball. The layup is up and good. Ball with his second field goal, now with four points. This game winding down, Alex, a, a great performance by the Union Bulldogs tonight. And it's been all around, too. You can pinpoint individual stats all you want to, but I think collectively as a unit, Union showed up this evening. Absolutely. As a layup was good by Bowser. Here's Florent now going coast to coast, kicks out to Hawkins. Hawkins tried the no-look pass to Ball. Ball wasn't expecting it, and it's going to, going to be a turnover. 15. Coach, Coach, Coach Niven saying, this is a pretty good pass, you know. Just unfortunate didn't didn't grab it on, but Hawkins showing a little shake and bake out there. I like it. And that one's no good. And Barnes with the rebound, and that is your ball game. Colts Union with... A dominating performance here tonight. They pick up the 103-58 victory. An all-around great performance for head coach Dave Niven's team. And so now we're going to take a quick 90-second break. And when we come back, I'll have an interview with Coach Niven with his thoughts on tonight's performance. Stay tuned for that interview. Community leaders are talking about Steve Beverly's TV classics, but are they serious? Do they like classic TV? Do they really watch? That's a lot of questions in one sentence, Steve. <laughs> what do they think about the host? I don't have any clear answers to that. What usually happens if you watch TV classics? A very entertaining evening for people. Watch TV classics Saturday and Sunday at 7 on TV6. Oh, that's a good idea. All right, crew, let's get started. Sure. Don't ignore the law. You must call 811 at least two to three days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Shut your mouth! Shut your mouth! Hard to watch, isn't yeah, where are you it? Going? You're sorry. Does this make it easier? Sorry, 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 sorry. How about this? How stupid you are. Maybe you should just look how away. Stupid are you? Tell me how stupid you are. I don't want to hear it. Is that better? It's hard to watch, but if you or someone you know is in an abusive relationship, make the call. A dominating performance for the Union Bulldogs, picking up a 103-58 victory over the Fist Bulldogs. I'm joined now by head coach Dave Divid. And, Coach, how are you feeling after a victory like that? Well, those, are, those are fun. Uh, it's been a while since we've had something like that. But you know, I thought our, our guys were really ready to guard. I, I think Fisk is a, is a difficult team to, to defend because they will all drive you. Um, and we did a good job of defending and contesting early. And then we were making shots. I mean, when you're making shots like that, the ball's going in the way it was with not just one or two guys, but really everybody was making making threes. Um, it, it's hard to, hard to play against that kind of a team. Absolutely. And uh, talking about your offense, uh, Tyree Boykin came off the bench, 
gave you 20 points, uh, played some quality minutes uh, without Casey Goodwin. Talk a bit about his performance tonight and uh, what this performance means down the road. Yeah, you know, it's a good game to be able to put a guy in and let him let him play a bunch of minutes at, at the point. You know, they were trying to pressure him. He had one turnover against that, but, but really did a, a, a solid job um, handling the basketball, getting us in stuff. And then he's he's got an ability to make some tough shots. He made some tough ones from three, made some tough ones at the rim. Uh, got six assists during that time as well. I mean, that's a solid, solid performance from a freshman uh, coming and do what he did tonight. So that's that's impressive. He's 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 had a couple mistakes defensively, letting guys get around him. We got to fix that. Um, but but no, he had a he had a really good game. Yeah, and overall, just a great all-around performance by your team tonight. Uh, not not just your starting five, but really nine, ten guys playing extremely well tonight. Talk a bit about what this means for the future. All, all ten guys, you know. Unfortunately, we're we're kind of thin. We only got ten, um, but everybody everybody came in and played well. I was most pleased with the unselfishness. Um, I think we had 31 assists tonight, which uh, a, a, a lot of guys sharing the basketball, moving the basketball. Um, that's the most encouraging stat I saw tonight. Absolutely. Now, if you could pick one thing to improve down the stretch, what would it be? Oh, wow. Um, you know, I, still, I thought there was some possessions defensively where we got, we gave up shots with our hands down. You need to have more active hands. And, and then late, I thought we gave up some more penetration that we can, we can, we can fix some of that as well. Yeah, absolutely. But overall, a dominating performance tonight. Coach, congratulations on the win. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up, Alex and I will have a final breakdown of the post-game stats, and then we'll wrap things up, give our player of the game at the desk right after these messages. Stay tuned. ...can cure what ails you. I watched and it got rid of my hemorrhoids. Staying awake at night? Just watch TV classics. My daughter watched and she went right to sleep. Do not watch Steve Beverly's TV classics if fights upset your stomach. Do not watch if high drama leads to emotional distress. And do not turn on TV 6 Saturday or Sunday at 7 if hillbillies give you a gallbladder attack. Ask your doctor if Steve Beverly's Classics is right for you. Families come in all sizes and shapes. Sometimes your friends are your family by choice. Or sometimes you're just stuck with Uncle Charles. But what we know is that you want to protect the people that are close to you. But the flu can unravel everything. <laughs> Your flu vaccine protects you and your family. No matter what draws your family together, protect yourself. Protect your family. Everyone needs a flu vaccine. Now you can have access to utility outage tips and tools anytime, anywhere from Jackson Energy Authority. Visit the outage center from your computer, tablet, or mobile device to check the map for an electric outage in your area. Also, stay up to date with recent social media outage posts and photos from JEA. For all this and more, go to jacksenergy.com and visit the Outage Center for outage information in your area. At the time, I just wasn't thinking. I used social media to vent. I wish you would have thought about the effects of scaring people. I didn't mean for that to happen. People took it as a terrorist threat. The university got shut down. I got arrested by the FBI, and now, I don't know what my future looks like. I search my name on the web almost every day and look at the stuff. It's not going away. Think before you post. A 103-58 victory for the Union Bulldogs tonight over the Fisk Bulldogs, an overall dominating performance. I'm joined by Alex Northcott as always, and Alex, uh, just... Talk about that performance we saw tonight from Union. Whoa, there's a lot to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. We can put it that way. As it was a great team performance. You just heard, heard Coach Nevin talk about how it, <laughs> these games are pretty fun. They're fun to, to broadcast. They're fun to watch. Obviously, if you're a coach, they're fun to coach because you're seeing a lot of good productivity from your players. Uh, just from a, a team standpoint, you look at one of the big stats that he pointed out, 31 assists. And the word he used was unselfishness. Very impressed with the way they moved the ball. Very impressed with how they not only just found the open man, but the open man was hitting some shots tonight. And so I think just when you get that early on in a game like they did um, with early possessions in transition, 
Nice feeds out to the corners, which allowed things to open up inside. Charlie Wilson got some easy isolations. But it really just was a collective effort to make that extra pass. Absolutely, and it just an all-around great performance for Union tonight. Mm -hmm. Shot 68% from the field, 52% from downtown, made 16 threes. And if this continues, this is a team yeah. that could really make some noise in the Gulf South Conference because right now they're projected to finish ninth, right. and tonight they certainly didn't look like a ninth-place team. Well, I will be the, the first one to probably – be Mr. Realistic, if you will, but uh, it, <laughs> that's not gonna that's not gonna happen every single night. Right. It, it won't. Right. If Union shoots sixty eight percent every single game for the rest of the season, they win a national championship by fifty points. Absolutely. I mean, let's just let's just put it that way. That's just uh, is way too much to speculate right there. However, I do think uh, the signs of getting to that point, if they do that very well, uh, then they're, they're in a good position. I think if they continue to move the ball, if they continue to um, play team basketball, because you're going to find some teams in the Gulf South Conference, uh, they're going to play, they're only going to have one or two guys, but those one or two guys are going to try to do it all for their respective teams. But it's the teams that come out and play as a unit they are going to be at the top of the conference. I don't think Union finishes anywhere close to nine. I think they're definitely uh, in the top five, depending on how things shape up. And if they can get some help for some, from some other teams, they could finish in the top three. Absolutely. And uh, now shifting gears, talking about the stats uh, for the post game. Uh, starting off with Fisk, uh, they, they tried many options in the lineup, mm -hmm. and, and nobody really clicked. They played well in the second half. Right. Uh, but ultimately, I, I think you look at uh, the poor free throw percentage, the poor shooting percentage. They were out-rebounded. Didn't have a lot of turnovers, but just yeah. overall, I think Bats' shot selection was a story for Fisk. Tonight. Yeah, they had a lot of one-and-done possessions. They threw up a shot, not really a lot of ball movement on the offense, not really a lot of organization coming from Coach Glover's club. Uh, a team that played very hard, I will say that. They played with aggression. They played with a lot of intensity and a lot of energy. Just didn't have it from a talent perspective. And tonight, when you're on the road after – Playing several games on the road, granted. This is a, a talented team in their respected division. I think they will go on and, and do do very well this season in NAIA basketball. Uh, they competed very well against some early NAIA, NAIA teams early on in the season. But when you come into Union uh, against a team that's obviously shooting this well and getting some open looks from outside, Fisk just really outmatched from the first five minutes of this game and couldn't recover. Absolutely. And it, you take a look at the stats, 21 of 65 from the field. 32% uh, uh, shot, 4 of 13, 31% uh, from downtown, 57% from the line, mm -hmm. 27 rebounds. Compare that to 43 for Union. And yeah. just honestly, nobody really stepped up for them tonight. Granted, yeah. they did have Joshua Madison with 14 and Montreal Neighbors with 11. But other than that. Uh, nobody in double figures. Uh, absolutely. And you look at El Paso Pitts, their leading scorer. Held scoreless tonight, 0 for 4, didn't get a lot of playing time, and I'm curious to know the story there. Only played 15 minutes. So either way, you're right, Fisk falls to 6-2 and two yeah. now, and I think that this is a team that will make some noise in the NEIA. They, mm -hmm. they uh, were just coming off of a six-game winning streak, defeated Bethel. Right. Uh, I think down the stretch, uh, this Fisk team will, will play very well. I, I really believe that. Just ran into a, a, a force to be reckoned with with Union mm -hmm. tonight, and – you look at Union, I think there's no doubt in anyone's mind uh, that our player of the game, and, and honestly, Alex, there, there probably could be some doubts uh, about this given how well Nick Velasquez played 7-7 seven of seven from downtown, mm -hmm. but we're going to give our player of the game to Tyree Boykin. Yep. Boykin, a great night, 7-8 of eight from the field, 5-6 of six from three, finished with 20 points, 6 assists, and 5 rebounds off the bench, right. too. I, I think that is the biggest story. Union with 51 bench points tonight, showing that it wasn't just their starting five, but really everyone making an impact tonight. It's huge, and Boykin coming off the bench and having that kind of impact is going to pay so much dividends going on in the season. Like we said, Casey Goodwin, the unquestionable starting point guard for this team, the team leader when it comes to handling the basketball, facilitating the play calls, and executing on the offensive end. But Boykin's going to have his moment. He's going to have a time where he's going to have to come in, and he's going to have to be that leader. At some point, he's going to have to step up. And tonight, you saw signs of that. Very encouraging looking forward. Undoubtedly, the player of the game as he played a very consistent and, and really just a, a high-level uh, basketball game. Absolutely. And rounding out the scoring for the Bulldogs with about 30 seconds left. Velasquez finished with 23. Boykin with 20. Todd Barnes, a quiet 15 points. Right. Played very well off the bench. Charlie Wilson with 13. Alex Keel with 11. Pedro Da Silva and Tevin Florent with 6. Casey Goodwin with 5. And Caleb Ball with 4.
And with that, that's going to wrap things up for a broadcast here tonight. He's Alex Northcutt. And for Worthy Road Studios, producer Steve Beverly, director Paul Schulze, co-director Lawson Mann, and the rest of the crew here at Worthy Road Studios, I'm Logan Whaley saying God bless, have a great night, and thank you for watching.